once again. Uh, what I have here is a brand new game for the Astrocade. Well, well, its development actually goes back a few years, but it's only just recently been released on cartridge. It's called War, and it's an excellent version of the classic arcade game Warlords. This is a very limited release. There's, there's only 20 copies in the full great-looking packaging like this, plus one copy with just a plain white label. Now, it wasn't intended to be a limited edition. It's just a matter of there not being enough parts available to make the cartridges. Perhaps in the future, other solutions for producing Astrocade carts will be found. At any rate, this is the first Astrocade cartridge release since the mid-80s, and I, I feel really, really lucky to have this great game, uh, and I'm trying to be very careful with it so it stays in good condition. So I'm keeping my eye on you, dangerously full glass of milk. Yeah, I know the kind of damage you can cause. You too, peanut butter. When I was a kid, I don't think I realized that Warlords was an arcade game, but I had it for the Atari 2600, and while it was great playing against other humans, it was kind of poor as a single-player game. In more recent years, there have been excellent homebrew conversions of Warlords like Castle Crisis for Atari 8-bit computers and Medieval Mayhem for the 2600 that kept the same multiplayer excitement while adding in tough computer AI for great single-player fun and they're both big improvements over the original Warlords on the 2600. War on the Astrocade resides comfortably alongside these two games. It features excellent graphics and great computer AI for competitive single-player battles. The idea behind Warlords is so simple and fun. Essentially a four-player combative game of Breakout, with a perfectly matched theme of knights and castles, it's a great fit for the Astrocade. It's almost like the Astrocade was made for this game with its four-player capability and a paddle built right into each controller. The first thing you notice when the game board appears on screen is how awesome the game looks. The Astrocade has limitations to how many colors it can display at once, just like every other console back then. But War uses techniques that I wouldn't understand to get more colors on screen at the same time than one normally sees in an Astrocade game. And the color choices are excellent, and at least to me, compared to the other Astrocade games I've played, uh, this one just pops off the screen with its vibrant and plentiful colors. And of course, besides the colors, the artwork is excellent. The castles are styled like the arcade, as are the kings inside. Uh, the flickering fireballs look fantastic. And the dragon that starts each game is just huge and colorful and the kind of character you don't see too often on this console. The sound is fairly basic, but gets the job done. I do really like the explosion sound. It's so raw and trashy, it really sounds like something's breaking apart. The gameplay is spot on, the paddle control works just as you would expect, and the computer makes for a tough opponent. What's great is that you never can tell how a match will go against the CPU. Uh, some can be lopsided, others will have everyone vying for that last score for ultimate victory. Uh, sometimes the AI seems to concentrate on you, other times it will attack the other CPU players. Uh, every game is different. And while I don't know exactly how many angles you're able to direct the fireball at, uh, you have the control to send it exactly where you want. If you can keep up with the game's pace, that is. Now, I don't think the fireballs go quite as fast as some other versions of Warlords, but the castles are closer together than in other games, so this trade-off makes sense. And by the time you get four fireballs on screen at once, there's more than enough action to keep you on your toes. And in case you're wondering uh, if you can catch the fireball, well, you can, but computer players can't, so when playing against them, I choose not to use it. But it's an important feature to have if you can get a bunch of people over to play, because if you ever need to team up against the player with the most points, uh, being able to catch and shoot will allow for attacks that no one could possibly defend against. Just don't hang on to the fireball too long. It will, bit by bit, eat away at your castle while you hold it. Good homebrew games are always interesting, especially when they're on a system that tends to be a little overlooked. War is a great game that really plays to the Astrocade's strengths, and it's just awesome after all these years to get such a high-quality game for this great system that has never really had its full potential realized. War was developed using an emulator, and while in general it went very well, there is one bug in the game that only popped up when it was finally run on real hardware. Uh, most of the time, when you boot up your Astrocade with War, the computer opponents play like this. Uh, they'll just hold on to the ball while their castles get eaten away. 
But while this bug is serious, there is a very easy fix. Just press the reset button, choose the calculator program, hit reset again, choose war, and now everything is fine. No more stupid computer AI. So basically, when I want to play war, I just turn the machine on, uh, run the calculator first, then reset, and run war, and everything's fine. I'm not sure of the technical reason why running another program first fixes everything. I guess it inoculates the kilobytes or something? Nonetheless, it's a really easy fix that only takes seconds to perform, and after that there are no problems with the game. No. <laughs>